but the details presumably say more about us than they do about the accuracy of the feeling. In other words, how much your assumptions about the inner life of the other is right on target. I'll give you another example of the weirdness of this. Our responses to reading or watching fiction. One of the classes I teach at Stanford is called Literature and the Brain. And an issue I always talk about with amazement is the fact that we shed tears or we laugh out loud or we worry or we agonize over the pain of somebody else, someone we know is not real. You're reading about, let's say, Jon Snow in Game of Thrones, and you're aware that the whole world he's in isn't even real. The author can tell us, look, this is fiction. There can be a giant sign in front of you that says, this is a string of words depicting a world that is totally made up, and it won't stop tears running down your cheek when something bad happens to Jon Snow. Now, I'll come back to literature and empathy in a moment, because I think literature is one of our most important tools for expanding the fence lines of our empathy. But for now, I'm just making the point that simply because you feel that someone else must be feeling the same thing you are, you might be talking about a robot or an explicitly made up character, and you'll still impose what you believe is, this is what that person must be feeling.